and that was by LexH, Intel Community Manager, onto the Reddit. So this is from Intel. This is one of their people. How's it going, everyone? Today we're going to be going over Intel's oxidation in their newest statement. Alright, so Intel's newest statement implies that they still have no idea on whether CPU oxidation issue is the root of cause, but they did disclose it was found back in 2022. Yes, they put this out a long time ago that there was something wrong and people were crashing out of nowhere for no reason, but they didn't really know what was going on. Uh, me, uh, hardcore overclocking, um... He also was doing a lot of research on RAM and the XMPs and the voltages of the CPU and the voltages that the XMPs were doing. Uh, the voltages of motherboards saying that everything was uh, good, but then some voltages were way out of spec, like way higher than what they should be. Um, yeah, again, this is without like consumers knowing about it. So yeah, Intel's oxidation here. While the Team Blue is in a total mess right now, and there's no denying that the company's approach to addressing the problem has made the whole situation worse. Initially, the firm had no idea what was causing the instability issue. Again, like I said, uh, me, myself, uh, I'm not sure if Lumi was checking out the voltages at all. Like, he does a lot of hardcore overclocking. Uh, like myself and hardcore over actually hardcore overclocking over on YouTube. Um, De Bauer did a little bit of research about it, and yeah, he was finding there's a little bit of a issue with communication, maybe with the motherboards, RAM manufacturers, and Intel. But then there's also this microcode that Intel had out. So yeah. Uh, initially, the firm had no idea what the instability issue is. Mainstream consumer CPUs, which eventually led to Intel categorizing it as a problem with, with the microcode algorithm. Yes and no. There was a bit of an issue with it, more or less for, like I said, um, the load line. Uh, with your load line calibration with these uh, higher end, more or less with the i9s, because they were such a high, they're enthusiast grade CPUs. Uh, you have two good cores, and then the rest of the cores aren't as good. As in those two good cores, you can put uh, l less voltage and get more clock speeds out of it, no problem. And the other cores, you need more voltage. But when you went into a game and left the game, the load line calibration messed up quite a bit for those. So here were they said here, which uh led the core was uh, yep, which caused elevated voltages in the processor. Elevated voltages in spots where it did not need it, which would make you uh B sod or blue screen. Uh so like I said, leaving a, a high stress situation to uh no stress situation and then you're getting the voltages that you're not supposed to be getting, it will crash your system and that is due to either the microcode or something else all right so another thing the same via the oxidation issue currently reported in the press is a minor one that was addressed with manufacturing improvements and screens in early 2023 yes if you were updating your bios is uh, correctly you would be noticing that they had all of these updates implemented way back it's not just now coming out it's been out for a while uh, i should have made more videos about the update in your bioses and checking the codes uh, i did make a couple of videos way back about changing certain things in your motherboard which can help out uh, stability and that was more or less your ram because of ram manufacturers put their own xmps their own voltages with their own motherboards like it's not every cpu is the same so it's kind of a give and take on that. Uh, the issue was identified in late 2022. Yep. Uh, with the manufacturing improvements and additional screens implemented, Intel was able to confirm removal of the impacted processors in a supply chain by early 2024. However, on shelf inventory may have persisted into early 2024 as well. So this is the CPUs with the microcode architecture that's been put into it without being updated. That's what they're implying on this, that they've already had certain 
uh, motherboard, CPUs, uh, everything out beforehand. And that has the microcode architecture onto it, which means if you do not update your hardware, if you're one of those people and there's millions of people out there that don't update the hardware properly, you will have issues down the line with degradation and you would have to check up your um, your actual code on your CPU, motherboard, whatever it is, uh, to see if one of those has to be updated to the current, to the new, and to the best. And it's always what you should be doing is updating your stuff regularly. If they have a new update, update it. Uh, minor manufacturing issues are an inescapable fact with the silicone products. It is true. It's all silicone lottery, especially when we're doing a hardcore overclocking, right, guys? Uh, like, we'll take 10 CPUs, and one might be the best. One might have the best voltages. One might be able to, you can put down to negative 190, no problem, no instability issues. It's all, it's silicone lottery with all of those. Uh, Intel uh, continuously works with the consumers to troubleshoot and remediate product failures, reports, and provides public communications on product issues when the ins uh, consumer risk exceeds Intel quality control thresholds. And that was by Lex H, Intel Community Manager, onto the Reddit. So this is from Intel. This is one of their people. Well, this makes it clear that Team Blue knew about that oxidation issue existed in the processors and that two f for the past two years since the problem was initially identified in late 2022, according to the statement. So either this means that Intel decided to uh, neglect the problem or, in general, uh, in implemented the fix didn't work, which is why a huge portion of the 14th, 13th gen CPUs are facing instability problems. Uh, their statement in short means that an oxidation issue exists, but we don't know whether that's the root of cause. Again, this, it's all, with all these newer things, remember back uh, when AMD launched their newer stuff, it was blowing up CPUs and motherboards onto a certain voltage rail, and this was straight out of like brand new stuff. Uh, without overclocking at all, it was sending too many voltage to it, and it was actually blowing up the CPUs. And this was AMD's l last launch, uh, uh, last launch, not their new stuff now that's coming out. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if there's any issues with that. But yeah, it's the same thing. It's the microarchitect code that's been put in, uh, into place before a whole lot of testing, before consumers have gotten a hold of it, before... All of these um, motherboard manufacturers make all these RAMs because it's all new RAM at the time too. Now we're somewhat getting into the better RAM stability for the higher clocks because uh, DDR5 is standard 4800 mega transfers. So and now we're going up the 1000 no problem with some CPUs and motherboards. Yeah, they're going to say they're going to be extending the warranties for affected processors, but despite this, the community average is still massive. Massive. I mean, they're going to be saving a lot of money in a way because there is a class act, uh, act uh, lawsuit that's going against them. So saying this is going to, in a way, help them. Maybe, hopefully, we'll see. But Intel, Intel needs a lot to work on. Uh, Team Blue needs to act quickly given that they are going downhill when it comes to finances. Have you checked out the uh, Intel stocks? They've gone down about 5% in the past like week. And uh, AMD's not really gone up the 5%. AMD's gone up about 1% in the past week. But that's just because it's the way it is. The way it is. But Intel stock has gone down 5% in one week, which is quite rough quite rough. I think they're around $27 per stock now, which is kind of low for Intel. But yeah, that's that's about it for their, their new release, their new statement that came from Intel was, yeah, they knew about this and they sent out certain things, but a lot of consumers don't update their stuff, so they don't know about this. They don't know about... Uh, 
things that might have happened. They didn't search up the code. And this is one thing if you're going to be getting into the hardcore overclocking, guys, is you're going to be wanting to update your systems to certain things. So your BIOS, you're going to go through the latest BIOS to the oldest BIOS, and you're going to check to see which BIOS is going to be better for your CPU and your RAM combo. And this can help you a lot, too. Uh, just by updating your BIOS to a certain one. Uh, mine's not updated to the latest one due to the fact that it will not let me go to 8,000 mega transfers when I'm doing uh, hardcore overclocking on my RAM. It would not let me go to 8,000 mega transfers on my Z690 Aorus Master uh, with the latest one, which could be due to the fact my CPU got affected, but I'm using a 12600K that I've been overclocking with my own voltages, my own timings on the RAM, everything's been set by me, not by Intel. So I don't have any of those high and low spikes out of the blue. Uh, all my low line calibration set right. Uh, all my voltages in my vid have been set to what I like. My uh, P cores have been set voltages the way I like. Uh, the E cores are set to the voltages the way I like on each core. Uh, they may not be the lowest voltages, but they are stable on everything that I need to do to uh, either play games, get work done. Uh, video editing, video editing uh, can be quite rough, especially when you're uh, doing 4K rendering and stuff like that. Uh, doing some blendering and stuff like that can be quite rough too on your on your combos. So uh, let me know in the comment section below, everyone, if you have. Any issues with your CPUs, with your Intel, your AMD. Um, yeah. It's been uh, it's been quite interesting the past month about everyone realizing that they've had this issue for a while. Um, I've said it for a while now. I believe Frame Chasers has said it for a while. Um, uh, GN has came out with a few statements and hopefully he will keep updating uh, what Intel has been saying and and what findings that he has done. Uh, the findings I have done, I can't say I, I can say my findings are great because I put my own voltages on. I'm not like a regular consumer with PC equipment. I do my own hardcore overclocking, my own modding. It could be software, it could be hardware, but there's nothing stock around my place. Everything I do is overclocked, so... I don't know anything about this oxidation issue. My CPU still runs 1.2 volts at uh, 5 gigahertz on uh, the P cores and 4 gigahertz on the E cores, no problem, on my 12600K, which is a pretty good overclock. Again, thank you everyone for subscribing. Uh, if you do like these kind of videos, if you are looking to support the channel, please smash that subscribe button it will help me out greatly uh, if you like this video give me a thumbs up um, yeah again leave me a comment in the comment section below on any issues that you guys have had uh, if you've known about this since 2022 it's late 2022 uh, I do believe um, it was December uh, the one the one BIOS update let me know that there was an issue with uh, like an air a microcode issue which is uh, there was an update for it back in December I believe it was I'll have to recheck I do believe it was December though last or December in 2022 then they also did another update in January uh, 2023 as well on the motherboards which might have helped out a bit more who knows again thank you all for watching Smash that subscribe button, give me a like, and don't forget to comment. As always, don't forget to get her done.